Hello, my name is Caitlin Germer, and today I will be doing a seminar on healthy eating to reduce your risk of colorectal cancer. Before we begin, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I have a Bachelor's of Science degree in Biology with a minor in Business Management from Grand Canyon University. I graduated in 2016 magna cum laude. I am currently a Master's of Science in Applied Nutrition candidate for the University of New England with a expected graduation date of summer 2020. My previous work experience includes uh, being a caregiver to the elderly for the past three years. During those three years, I worked with patients ranging in age from 50 to 103, and some of my duties included planning and preparing their meals. Some of my patients were diabetic, obese, and a couple were undergoing cancer treatments. So part of what I had to do was ensure um, they were eating properly to help manage those diseases. One of my other work experiences was volunteering for an organization called HOSA Future Health Professionals. Uh, this is a student-run health organization that I served as the vice president on at Grand Canyon University. And some of my duties included creating uh, presentations to give to an audience. And I also competed in a state and international leadership conference where I created a presentation on the importance of breastfeeding and presented it to pregnant teen moms. And part of what I had to do was help educate them on uh, the importance of breastfeeding and then receive feedback, which I then presented to a panel of judges. What is colorectal cancer? So your colon is the final portion of your digestive tract. It is also known as the large intestine, and it connects the small intestine to the rectum. So colorectal cancer is the cancer that starts in the colon or the rectum, and they're often grouped together due to many similar features. So here are some of the warning signs of colorectal cancer. First would be a change in bowel habits. This can be diarrhea, constipation, or narrowing of the stool that lasts for more than a few days. If it happens once or twice, it's not as concerning, but if there is a big change and it continues to persist past a couple days, this is a concern. Uh, next is the feeling that you need to poop, and that doesn't go away once you have used the restroom. Rectal bleeding or dark stool or blood in the stool are also big red flags. Some physical changes that you might experience would be weakness or fatigue, unintended weight loss or cramping or stomach pain, and some pre-existing conditions that do increase your risk of colorectal cancer are ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, precancerous polyps that may have been discovered on previous colonoscopies, type 2 diabetes, and a family history of colorectal cancer. So some of the causes of colorectal cancer can be diet-related or non-diet-related. So the diet-related causes would be a diet high in red meats, uh, meats that are cooked at a higher temperature, heavy alcohol use, or diets that are low in fiber. Some non-diet-related risks of colorectal cancer are physical inactivity, obesity, a family history of colorectal cancer, or a history of irritable bowel syndrome. Also, all the pre-existing conditions I mentioned on the previous slide, slide are also could also lead to colon cancer. So why is there a risk for colorectal cancer? So African Americans are two times more likely to be diagnosed with cancer before the age of 50. They're also 1.67 times more likely to die within five years after having surgery to remove the cancer. And the 10-year survival rate after diagnosis of colorectal cancer is about 31%. As you can see in this graph, 
um, African Americans, which are this second column here, have the highest incident mortality and ratio of colorectal cancer in the United States. One of the reasons why African Americans may have a higher incident of colorectal cancer in the United States is many of them tend to follow a Western Southern diet. This is a diet that is high in red meat, fried chicken and fish, eggs, french fries, cheese, and white breads, along with sweets. There are a couple barriers to diagnosis for colorectal cancer in African Americans. Uh, the first one is African Americans tend to favor a stool test over colonoscopies. Uh, both are diagnostic tools used to check for colon cancer, but stool tests tend to be less accurate than colonoscopies since colonoscopies do go inside the colon and actually look for cancerous polyps. The second barrier to diagnosis is the lack of adherence to screening. It is recommended people begin screening for colorectal cancer at the age of 50 and continue to be screened up to 10 years, every 10 years after the age of 50. But African Americans tend to have a lower adherence to that schedule. A lower socioeconomic status often leads to a delay in screening. This could be due to health insurance or lack of health insurance or the inability to take the time off work to have a colonoscopy done. So new guidelines show that African Americans should begin screening for colon cancer at the age of 45. More and more cases of cancer are being uh, diagnosed before the age of 50 and especially in African Americans. Um, colon cancer is more prevalent before the age of 50. So the new guidelines suggest beginning screening earlier to hopefully prevent um, the cancer from being diagnosed later. Low socioeconomic status African Americans under the age of 50 are at a greater risk for developing colorectal cancer as well. So what foods should you avoid? to help prevent colorectal cancer. So red and processed meat, this is one of the biggest links to colorectal cancer. By increasing your red and processed meat intake by 25 grams, it can increase your risk of colorectal cancer by about 49%. So some examples of red meat include beef, pork, lamb and veal, and processed meat can be anything from bacon, salami, bologna, sausages, hot dogs. Um, any lunch meat would be a, considered a processed meat as well. Consuming foods that are cooked at a higher temperature also increase the risk of colorectal cancer. So pan frying or grilling over an open flame would be considered cooking at a higher temperature. When foods are cooked at a higher temperature, a chemical a chemical called HCA is produced. This would HCA is produced when the amino acids in the meat, um, amino acids are the building blocks for protein, which is what meat is, um, react to the high temperatures. Um, HCA isn't found in uh, many other products besides meats that are cooked at a high temperature. PHAs are created when the fat from the meat source drips into the heat, creating smoke. The chemical is in the smoke, the PAHs are in the smoke, and it adheres to the meat surface, which is then consumed. HCA and PAHs can damage the DNA after being metabolized, leading to colon. What this means is after the meat is consumed, these chemicals, HCA and PAH, are released, and as the cells begin to reproduce, the DNA has been altered, so they tend to overproduce, which can lead to colon cancer. Next, heavy alcohol use has been linked to colon cancer. Studies have shown that for every 10 grams of alcohol that are consumed per day, 
there's a 7% increase for the risk of colorectal cancer. Uh, people who consume three and a half drinks per day, which is about 50 grams of alcohol, have a 50% increased risk of developing colorectal cancer. And this is because alcohol contains a chemical called ethanol, which increases the risk for colorectal cancer. Bacteria in the colon and rectum convert alcohol to acetaldehyde, which is a carcinogen, um, which is shown to cause cancer. Alcohol can also lead to weight gain, which is linked to colorectal cancer. And alcohol can also be linked to other cancers and diseases. So for improved overall health, it is best to keep alcohol in moderation. A low fiber diet has also been linked to colorectal cancer. A person who consumes a low fiber diet is 40% more likely to develop colorectal cancer. Now what is fiber? Fiber is a component of food that cannot be broken down or digested. Since fiber cannot be broken down, it is considered bulky, which it helps move food through the digestive system by cleaning out anything that might have been stuck in there. The Western diet, which I mentioned before, is considered to be a low fiber, high fat diet, which has been linked to increased risk of colorectal cancer. A low fiber diet is classified as less than 10 to 15 grams of fiber per day. The Western diet is often high in calories and processed foods and low in fiber. And when a diet is higher in processed foods, you're often lacking some of the micronutrients that come with eating higher fiber foods and fresh fruit foods. Fiber helps prevent constipation, maintain a healthy weight, and lowers the risk of other diseases. Um, some examples of lower fiber foods include breads, pastas, and potatoes. So now let's re review the foods that I mentioned are best to be avoided to help reduce the risk of colorectal cancer. This includes red meats and processed meats, including sausages and lunch meats. Uh, watching your alcohol intake, making sure that you are keeping that in moderation, avoiding processed and low fiber foods, and also watching how much food you consume that is cooked at a higher temperature. So some of the lifestyle changes that can be made along with avoiding the foods we just discussed would be to increase physical activity. Um, the recommended physical activity is 30 minutes a day, five days a week. Uh, improving the, your diet to a healthier diet to help promote weight loss. And getting screened for colon cancer when it is recommended. So now that I've told you everything you shouldn't eat, what should you eat? So eat this, not that. Instead of red meat, uh, try incorporating poultry like chicken or turkey instead of steak. You can also incorporate more fish into your diet. Um, salmon, tilapia, Mahi mahi are all great examples of a good protein instead of red meat. And if you're adventurous enough to try it, you can incorporate some tofu into your diet. I know that's not for everyone, but it is an option for a good protein. Instead of processed meat, um, you can try adding canned tuna to your lunch, taking canned tuna with some crackers or making a tuna fish sandwich or is a great option instead of um, deli meat. Roasted chicken, you can buy that either in the can or get a rotisserie chicken from the store and make your own chicken salad sandwich. You can just add shredded chicken to the top of a salad um, for a good protein at lunch. And the classic peanut butter and jelly is a great lunch option. Peanut butter is high in protein and good fats, so it will help keep you full um, throughout the rest of the workday. Instead of low fiber options such as processed food, try incorporating more vegetables, fruits, and whole grains. 
This can be done by swapping out maybe uh, potato chips 